This video is a step-by-step -step guide to build with Autogen and the case study we are going to consider is web scraping. The objective of Autogen is the developer puts in a minimum effort to allow multiple agents to converse and build the next generation LLM applications. Autogen is the framework that was introduced in September 2023 to allow multiple agents to converse. An agent is simply a software program that can operate autonomously, make choices, make uh, decisions, interact with various tools, and perform specific tasks. This is very similar to that of an automated agent chat, wherein let's say a user asks a question and the AI responds based on its training. What if the user is also an agent and the assistant who is answering is also an agent? Then we get something like an automated agent chat between agents or a chat between multiple agents. This is the idea behind Autogen. The major features of the agent are they are conversable, that is one agent can talk to another and they are customizable. You can integrate it with the LLM, various tools. You can also have the uh, one end of the agent as just another human. All these are possible in Autogen. Autogen requires a Python version greater than or equal to 3.8. We pip install using pip install py Autogen. If we use a version less than 0.2, it requires an OpenAI version of less than 1. Else, the OpenAI version has to be greater than or equal to 1. To use, we import Autogen. The base class that is used is Conversable Agents for Agents to Converse. And the two basic subclasses that we will be using are Assistant Agent and User Proxy Agent. These are the two agents that are going to communicate with one another to get the result that we want. This slide shows the interaction between the two agents, which one we call as the user proxy and the assistant. The assistant tries to get the result with the prodding of the user proxy. So first, the user proxy sends the task that is to be completed to the assistant. The assistant writes a Python code to solve the problem and ask the user agent to execute the code. It is also possible for it to get the answer from an LLM and not necessarily write a Python code to solve the problem. The user proxy is the one that executes the code and based on the result, it generates an auto reply. It is also possible to have a human in the side of a user proxy where the human is prompted to give the reply. If not, it can execute on its own. Now that the reply goes to the assistant, it now generates a response based on the user's reply. This may or may not be the final answer that is expected by the user, in this case, the user proxy. If it is the final answer that is expected, then the assistant terminates the conversation. If it is not the answer that the user proxy expects, the user again informs the assistant what it expects and what is going wrong and the assistant again tries to correct it. So this, these two steps, three and four, continuously happen in a loop till the answer that is expected by the user proxy is received. First, we create a instance for the assistant agent using autogen.assistantagent and we can give it a name. It is possible that the user proxy is trying to execute a Python code when the Python code is written by the assistant to solve the problem. It is also possible that there is no code to be executed, in which case the LLM response is used. If the LLM response is to be used when there is no code execution. It is compulsorily, it is compulsory that we give LLM underscore config is equal to and give 
the dictionary config list where the config list is a list specifying the model that we want to use along with the API key. We need to create the instance for user proxy agent. We give the name which is equal to user proxy here and it is not mandatory but human input mode if it is given as never it assumes that always the agent is expected to find its own reply and reply to the assistant. And if human input mode is equal to always, it is assumed that it expects the human to give a response. If there is a human response expected, then it will ask, provide feedback to assistant, press enter to skip and, and use auto reply or type exit to end the conversation. And you will get an input box. If you want, you can type a human input. If you just press exit, it will automatically go and try to give an auto reply. Now, the assistant is actually passing a Python code to the user to execute so that you can get the final answer. If you give user execution config enabled, which is by default, then by default, the user proxy will automatically run the code that was sent by the assistant to get the answer. And by default, LLM config is disabled. And as we saw in the previous slide, only when it is enabled, if there is no Python code to be executed, it will automatically get the response from the LLM. Now the user proxy initiates the conversation by sending the task to the assistant. So it sends the message, I need you to write a Python script to do the following. We are planning to do a web scraping. Go to Langchain documents page for Python. Search for the topic on document loaders in Langchain used for accessing PDF content. Gather the results, no more than five, and print the result on the screen. This elaborate task when is sent to the assistant. This is a snapshot of the output window in which the task is sent from the user proxy to the assistant. The assistant replies to the user proxy with the Python script to get the result. The code was received by the user proxy. Now it tries to execute it. It executes it using the native code execution. Because as mentioned, it says it was called with use docker evaluating to true, but it could not find it. This is a variation of the code. This was done in my previous video. Here, the code execution config is given to be false. In which case, it will not check if the code is to be executed with the help of the docker and directly it goes to the native code execution. But if this is not given, it first tries to see if it can execute using the Docker, else it falls to the native code execution. As seen, there was no result because of the code executed by the user proxy. Now the assistant realizes that there was some issue in the code that it sent. And then it asks, okay, now send me a search engine with which you want me to do this web scraping. And the user proxy decides not to reply to it. So immediately the assistant takes a decision on its own and says, I will use Google as the default search engine and just continue. Please note it has taken all the decisions autonomously. And then it rewrites the Python code. A snapshot is given and final line says, please execute the script and let me know if it retrieves the desired result. Now when uh, user proxy tries to execute the new code, it gets an error which is a Unicode encode error. This information is sent to the assistant which again updates the code and finally says, please try, please try executing this updated code again. It addresses the encoding error placeholders. All these years, we had to correct the errors.
especially when you are working with land chain agents, you might have come across this quite a bit. But here, even when there is an error, the communication between the agents are in such a way that the errors are automatically communicated and corrected, and there is absolutely no human intervention required. When the user proxy executed, it could get five results. When the results are now passed to the assistant, the assistant takes a decision, oh, good, fine, you've got all the answers that you wanted. I have five results and these are the links to the articles and sends this information as the final output back to the user agent. The user agent has received the result that it wants and the assistant finally terminates the conversation. We have elaborately seen how to do web scraping using Autogen. If you like the video, press the like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.